Hi, and welcome to my good friend and fellow HR professional, Adolfo Pensato. Adolfo, lovely to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, lovely to see you as well. Thank you very much for inviting me to this interview. It's great to have you here. And I'm really looking forward to hearing more about you and your career and maybe some other of the things that have happened over the last couple of years in particular. Um, so we'll, we'll make a start with that. But just to sort of put context, obviously at the, your current role is head of HR for the UK and Europe for mm -hmm. Unique Vacations at UK Limited. That's correct, yeah. Brilliant. So, Starting with that, tell me about your career journey and, and how you got to where you are now, because it's not a traditional HR journey by any stretch of the imagination, is it? No, no, at all. So I have always been very passionate about the trolling industry. Um, so I studied my university degree in my home country in Spain. So I studied travel and tourism, which most of you will be doing right now. Um, and then they started to, to come to the UK to further expand it. Um, so I've been very fortunate to, to experience initially operations because this is how my career started in operations, not just working um, in travel agencies, but also in the airlines. And actually in the UK, my first job was on Eurostar, on board Eurostar. Uh, so that gave me a very solid background on the challenges and experiences that staff employees um, go through through in operations. Um, I landed in HR by pure mistake. Um, probably most HR professionals will say exactly the same thing. Um, one friend of mine um, was studying for the master's degree in HR management. Um, and I was in that junction in my career in which I thought, what do I do with my life? Do I want to continue working in a in operations, so do I want to change um, paths? So I looked into that HR management, I thought, well, this ticked a lot of the boxes that I like, so why not? So I enrolled um, about, well, it's going to be now 10, 12 years ago, that I studied my, my university degree. And um, yeah, that, that was how I started. And from there, when my HR career started in hospitality in, in five star hotels, um, to be honest, that is where I experienced a, what, what it actually means a fast pace, a full on environment in which I learned you know, the ropes on it. Um, and then eventually I missed the bus of the travel sector. So I was extremely um, privileged to be hired as the HR manager for UK, to start with, um, for Unique Vacations um, Limited, which is an, uh, an affiliate of Sandals and, and Beaches Resorts. And yeah, from the UK, we've expanded now to Europe. So yeah, we continue with the, with the HR career, learning a lot. Mm. Yes, and, and, and I guess, you know, you saying you were learning a lot, I mean, the last year has been particularly tough and um, one thing that we're very good at in the travel industry let alone in HR is the ability to adapt and be resilient so maybe you could just take us through being what have been the biggest challenges in the last year during COVID but also maybe in your career and how have you had to learn to adapt to deal with those challenges? As you say probably not just me but pretty much every HR professional has been tested this year and last year, um, this is this is an environment and, and a situation that no one has experienced before. So, in terms of the biggest challenge in my career, this this has been it. Um, we've had to uh, adapt not just from the moment that the challenge the, the, the chancellor released the the fellow scheme that pretty much put us in a situation in which we have to learn literally we have to hit the, the the ground running not just because furlough meant nothing to me um, and to most of the HR professionals but at the same time we were on the front line we were the the one responsible for briefing senior management for reassuring everyone that you know how the furlough scheme meant but at the same time learning because the furlough scheme was changing sometimes on a daily basis, and we have to be very much on top of things. 
that on top of being working from home, a situation that no one in my company had experienced before in, the, in, 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 this, in this environment. Um, so all that put together, we, we have to actually face different challenges. So on one, on one side, we have to be learning about the, the fellow scheme. Then we had the homeworking environment. The communication had to be flowing across all the departments. And we have to actually get accustomed to new technology. So I can guarantee no one from my senior management team knew about Microsoft Teams or Zoom. Obviously, we are all experts now, but <laughs> all that put the HR department, obviously every other department, but me in particular, in a situation where we have to adapt very quickly without any training. I can actually tell you how many webinars I've attended to, not just from law firms, about furlough, home working, et cetera, et cetera, but also from HMRC. We, I have to know exactly how the furlough scheme would work, not just by explaining it to my staff and my management team, but also trying to understand technically how this would work from the payroll point of view, so that people will have as little inconvenience as possible, but at the same time trying to um, benefit from it. So, so yeah, I would I mean, say that that would be the biggest challenge I've faced. We, we went through redundancies as well, but this is something that I've experienced before. But all that put together was not the ideal situation, but you know, thankfully we went through that and we came out to the other side. Fingers crossed we are coming out through from the other side, which is, is really good and, and gives us hope for the future. You know, HR is, is I guess, one of those uh, professions that touches every single area of the business. It has to, because fundamentally it is about the business's biggest resource, which is the people that, that make up and, and staff the business. Um, so what is it that you enjoy most about your role in HR? Yeah, as you say, I consider myself an HR generalist. Nature generally is, is pretty much a jack of all trades. So we touch on everything from employee relations to recruitment to coaching to etc. What I would enjoy most, and this is probably one of the reasons why I joined the, the HR world, is, is staff development. It's staff development is the learning and development side, is a coaching. It's, it's extremely rewarding when someone actually comes to you with a situation with for advice, simply to, to understand what he or she can do, but also what angle you can actually tackle that situation from. Um, that is extremely rewarding when you go through everything, you help the person, and that person all of a sudden bloom, flourishes, and they come back to you and say, well, you know, thank you very much for, for that advice. That is actually what helped me through. Um, there are other aspects of the, the HR environment that I love. And one of them is, is actually employee relations. I really like employee relations. I love it, the legal side of it. I, I love being challenged with a situation in which you need to look at it from different angles and, and challenge every single vision and every single um, point of view, uh, something that may have been happening for the for a long time in this company and all of a sudden this situation arises and you need to tackle it and you say well you know what actually hmm, maybe what we've been doing until now is, is not correct so we need to change it but at the same time there is a, a person a human being on the other side so it's kind of balance out the legal side of it with treating that person fairly and, um, and and humane in a humane way. Well. Absolutely. I mean, I think a large part of it is, is you know, we look at the psychology um, aspect of it, and we deal with the psychology of dealing with with people and situations. But there's also the psychology of business as well, isn't there? And and having to be able to marry those two together. Yeah. Ultimately, it's about providing 
a service that enables people to flourish and the business to flourish as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and, and part of that obviously is making sure, and, and uh, you and I will have used this phrase a hundred times, if not more, which is, you know, it's about having the right people in the right place at the right time with the right skills for the right money. And that's, that's kind of, you know, an easy generic way of saying what an HR person does. Yeah. But um, obviously things are changing now because of, of, of what we've had to adapt to and learn during COVID, let alone all this brand new world of furlough. Um, so thinking about going forward, um, and particularly bearing in mind our audience of people who will be looking for roles in the future, what do you think, ch what changes do you think have, will happen or have, are you seeing happen as part of the, the hiring process as we come into this post-COVID world? Yeah. <clears throat> in, in my company at the moment, we still have a hiring freeze, so we, we're not seeing that at the moment, but hopefully within two or three months, we will be uh, able to post vacancies and we'll be able to expand um, all the departments. Now, <laughs> personally speaking, I don't believe the roles would change too much. Um, whether you continue working from home or this, the, um, the interview process is completely face-to-face -face or virtual, the, the, the skills that will be required will continue being the same thing. You'll still need to, to look or do your research about the company. You, you still need to sell yourself, show your skills, the experiences, uh, the knowledge of company that you're applying for. You may need to probably polish a bit more your, your, your persona when you are interviewing with someone else because you don't have that warm of being in a physical room. So that's probably what will change a bit more. Certainly from the interviewer point of view, you can actually gauge that, that feeling, that emotion, that change in your, in your facial expressions as to what, you know, what, what is it exactly that, that you're telling me, what is it exactly that, that you're trying to convey. That probably will be what will change the most the, the, the mechanism of, of the hiring process probably will not be very different, or at least I'm not perceiving it as, as very different, mm -hmm. uh, but it will be more that interaction, how you come to, to convey the same emotions and the same um, approachability, because at the end of the day, when you're doing an interview, you just want to show that you are approachable and that you are what, I'm, what you're looking for. Yeah. Uh, that part is probably how you're going to, to get that across in the same way as you would do physically, that probably will be the main change. Yeah, I think I think there is another challenge, which I, I'm sure you're thinking about um, with regards to, to your business as well, which is, uh, you know, people will be going back to the office um, and offices will open again and it won't always be working from home, though there will be obviously, I'm sure, a lot of opportunity for hybrid working, as we're calling it. But actually, one of the things in an interview process, of course, is that is getting a sense of the office itself, isn't it? And and seeing what, you know, the, the rest of the staff are, are like and and getting that sense, because obviously interviews are as much about the business being interviewed as they are the person. So what do you think employers might need to do to maybe get around that when they are because they're selling the company as well, aren't they? And, and the role to to these two future recruits. Yeah, and that is the physicality of, of the, the location, whether that, I mean, some companies we may not even have an office and it would be just a question of we all working remotely. Um, your website, how your company culture is, all that is, is what is going to sell as well to the, to the candidate what type of company he or she will be working with. Um, what we're thinking of doing is, is creating a, a website in which you will have a lot more information about who we are and what we stand for. And that, just to be honest, but on, on with, with my current company, this is kind of baby step. This is the, the initial stage. So we haven't been there before. Again, because we're not thinking that we're going to hire at least for a few months. So that is the main project that I'm working with, but also putting together a remote onboarding and creating a, a body system, 
So when the person comes in here, this person is, is going to, to have someone to rely on and you know, during the eight working hours uh, per shift, that person will have someone there supporting them all, all, all the time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is something that companies will need to, to start thinking about um, and it's how they, they continue to relay the company culture and everything to, to the candidate. Yeah. But I think if you're not going to, to go physically to, to the office and you're going to do a tour, which is what companies tend to have or tend to do, you will need to rely on technology and what type of technology you want to go for is what each company will need to, to check in. You're right. I think, you know, the, the website is going to be, you know, the, the how people will will develop their websites to, to showcase more of their culture is really important. Um, but also, you know, the social media channels of the business are, as well, isn't it? Because that gives you a sense of what the company's like and and, and the sorts of, of the, you know, the culture that they display is often reflective in that. So, yeah, all really good stuff. And I think that hopefully will make people feel a little bit more relaxed when they're thinking, well, how do I make that decision when I'm being interviewed for a company? And, and you said earlier as well about the need to research the company. And that will be even more important, won't it? Because that will enable you to get that sort of sense. So in terms of um, the people who are, who are watching this and think, oh, you know, HR is, a, is an area that uh, is, is of interest to me. Um, and you know whether they could be doing a, a tourism degree, but of course a lot of that is the business functions itself. So they'll be learning about HR. What would be your advice to people who might be interested in in a similar career to yours? Yeah, it, but when it comes to HR, one of the things that HR always get blamed for is that we don't know about operations. We do not relay about what departments do what challenges what experiences they have and whether we actually know what they, what they're talking about so what i mentioned before about employee relations when you're presented with a situation is extremely important that you know exactly what that situation is not necessarily that you have experienced it but you know what it is about i had as i mentioned before i had the benefit of starting in operations so having worked in airlines and travel agencies, I know what it is to be on that side. So having moved to the other side, which is the HR side, I, I can relate. I, I'm, I'm technically, I guess, savvy in most of the areas that is about the, the travel industry. So if you do not start from the operations point of view, my advice to you will be, if you start in HR, ensure that your commercial acumen and your commercial knowledge of that company is, is tip top. Why? Because it's going to give you credibility to the departments that you know what you're talking about. So when you do a presentation, when you liaise with all the departments and the managers and, and every single front line, they perceive that you, you, you understand what they're going through. So if they say, we understand, you need to understand, well, so why you understand? What can actually help the manager go through, boy, is it time management? Is it really understaffing? Is that maybe a technology is, is not correct? So if you understand that from the very beginning, that manager will will take you seriously. I'm not saying that they will not take you seriously if you don't, but certainly it will be a step forward. So yeah. for me, know the company inside out, financially, commercially, and as you said before, from the social media, what type of company culture it is, whether it is very corporate or it is more informal, that will determine how you're going to approach every single situation. So that will be the main advice is know your company. Yeah, couldn't agree with you more. Absolutely critical. For, to, to be a proper HR person, you need to have that strategic and commercial sense that you can bring to the table. Right. Uh, couldn't agree with you more. Um, and, and I guess as we as we coming in to this, this, again, this new word you talked about, you didn't think the jobs and the roles would change that much, but are there any other skills? I mean, you mentioned a bit about delivering obviously online, but are there any skills that you see 
businesses and your business looking for in the people that they are employing, irrespective of whatever role it is they're going into? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously the, the sector is going to, to give you what type of skills, whether it's going to be a bit more technical or not. Uh, but generically speaking, I would say, first of all, what I mentioned before is commercial awareness, because that is, is top of my list. Um, in HR, you need to have that warm personality in which people feel comfortable going to you and being approachable. Uh, again, it will depend on the HR department because some HR departments are sourced. They're not actually part of your, the, the operations. Some others will be ingrained within the operations, which is the personally the ones I enjoy the most, where you're actually part of the whole, you know, the daily operations. So, for that build rapport, it has to be very, very important. Build rapport with all the managers. That for you, it's, it's it doesn't really matter whether you're talking to the general manager, you're actually talking to a reservation agent. It doesn't really matter. You need to be approachable for everyone. You need to be very resilient, thick skin, because you will be dealing with a lot of emotional situations some of them will test your own ability to deal with that particular situation and with time you will you will learn how to navigate those uh, but resilient and communication skills again extremely important and um, for me one extremely important part but that is just because i guess uh, um, i'm spanish is learn a foreign language if you try to learn a second language, European language or non-European language, and that will give you a different perspective on a multinational, multilingual environment. So you understand a bit more that not everyone thinks in the same way as you do. Um, so learning a language, learning another culture will help you a lot. So I would say for me, those will be the main skills um, that you should work on. Fantastic. Uh, we could sit here swapping probably HR war stories forever, but uh, I'll leave that to the next time you and I can actually meet face to face and, and hopefully do it over, over a glass of something nice and cold. Um, but Adolfo, um, before we finish, I have one question that I usually ask at the end of these. But yeah. in mind, you've had quite a, a varied career and in, in an interesting career path. If you could go back to yourself uh, when you were starting out your career, all those, all those few few years ago, um, a lot. <laughs> one thing you would tell yourself? Oh gosh, okay. Um, I would say, so when I finished my travel and tourism degree, uh, to be honest, I didn't have a clue what I wanted. Um, I didn't think that I had planned anything. So it was a question of, well, I finished my degree, let's see what comes up. So what I would say to myself is probably a bit more planning. Um, not necessarily on your last year, but, or maybe the first year, but if you're doing a three year degree, halfway through the, your degree, you, you want to start narrowing down what you want to do. Try to talk to people, trying to understand exactly what that sector uh, entails. Uh, so planning um, before you actually finish your degree and network, network, network network because that again is going to to help you land your first role and this is a labor market that is going to be extremely competitive so the more people you know the more time you show your face the more times you interact through linkedin social media with that particular company or with that particular group um, it's, it's going to show, first of all, your interest, and secondly, that you you are you will be an asset to, to that particular sector. So, if it's airline, whether it is travel agency, which is tour guide, with it tour operators, whatever it is, um, narrow it down, plan ahead, and start joining groups that will target that particular sector. 
Well, hopefully that's that's that sort of links in beautifully to what Future You is all about. So obviously we showcase lots of different careers and different sectors within the tourism and uh, hospitality industries and aviation industries, but also, um, as you know, we we promote networking as being an absolutely critical skill for mm -hmm. anyone um, who wants to work in this amazing sector. Yeah. So, Adolfo, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. You're no worries, a huge supporter you. of Future You and we do appreciate it. Um, and look forward to seeing you very soon. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> thank you to all and good luck on your studies. Mm-hmm.